But before we are gonna get into this really relaxing reading vlog, I have to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. I'm so honored that they wanted to work with me again and I would highly recommend their service. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They have thousands of inspiring classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and many more. Members get unlimited access to all of these classes and they even include hands-on projects projects and feedback from a community of millions. I've been taking a couple of Skillshare classes in the past, such as to improve my Spanish, but also to give me some tips on how to edit videos in Premiere Pro. And they have so many topics that you can choose from. There's definitely something that fits with your interests. I have a special offer for you guys. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will receive a one month Skillshare premium trial for free so you can explore all of your creativity. So don't forget to check it out. And right now, let's go on to this super relaxing reading vlog. Good morning, everyone. I don't even know why I'm filming in bed because look at this face. <laughs> it is 8.30 in the morning. My boyfriend came over and slept here all of a sudden and he had to go to work at 7.15, so I have been awake pretty much ever since. This past week, I have noticed that my body feels so tense and that might also be because last week i had two finals and those were my first finals in wait how long in over a year i think so it was weird and it was my first physical exam in like almost two years because of covid and that's just really weird to realize and after those finals i immediately had to make like another presentation and we had all these deadlines so i couldn't just like take a moment for myself and today i should do a couple of things actually for school but i'm just i'm not gonna do it because i feel like my body is so tense and i just like i need to do nothing for a day and by that i mean i'm gonna make a nice breakfast for myself i'm gonna read some in the books that i'm currently reading and i'm gonna tell you my opinions and progress i'm gonna watch some youtube and just have chill time with my boyfriend but let's make some nice breakfast some coffee because I love me some breakfast and coffee. <laughs> Coffee looks like a dick, so I'm not gonna show it to you. <laughs> And now I wanted to incorporate a little read with me video. So grab your book, grab a nice drink, stay hydrated, you guys, <laughs> and let's read together for about half an hour. You will hear soft background noises of me drinking my drink, moving in my chair, 
but nothing really disturbing. So I'm going to shut up right now (laughs) and let's read some in our books.
I hope you enjoyed this little read with me session. Now let's continue on with the rest of the reading vlog. Okay, I'm gonna curl my hair because it looks like sh <laughs> I really need to get a haircut because if you look at my ends, they are completely dead and I just, I don't know what to do about it. And when I curl my hair, it looks a little bit better. And I thought, let's talk about the books that I'm currently reading. I hope that you enjoyed that little like reading with me, read with me. I always love having those in like reading vlogs or just watching them separately because it does truly motivate me when I see someone else read as well. Because I get easily distracted by my phone, by YouTube, by life, <laughs> by all the things that I'm stressing about and just my thoughts in general. So I hope that you found that helpful. I am trying to get my curling iron loose. As you have seen, I am currently reading Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton, and I rarely read nonfiction, and this is like an autobiography about Dolly Alderton, and basically, I guess, her whole life. She does talk about parties, she does talk about dates, friends, jobs, life, love. It's basically a book about her life until so far, and it is Besides entertaining, I feel like just as if I'm listening to a friend talk to me about all of her life lessons. And what I love to do with nonfiction is I love marking quotes or just important messages that I see. So I kind of just like mark them with a colored pencil and hopefully I will return to them when I feel like I need to have like reassuring words. But I'm almost finished with that. I'm on page 313. My boyfriend is coming here in like two hours. So I'm hoping that I can like curl my hair, watch maybe The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is one of my favorite movies. And I watch it every single year. And I kind of feel like watching it, curling my hair, finishing this book would be the perfect thing to do for me as like a surface of self care. That's basically what today's about. And I do really feel calm and a bit more collected. And I think that tomorrow I will be able to nail all the stuff that I gotta do. So yeah, reading this one and really enjoying it. I rarely read nonfiction, but I would highly recommend this one if you are just like me at the beginning of your twenties and kind of like trying to figure out what life is. And I still have a long time, hopefully ahead of me to do just that. But I don't know, maybe in some way, shape or form, this will help. But I'm also currently reading The X Hex by Aaron Sterling which is the pen name of Rachel Hawkins. This is perfect for the time right now. It is like a witchy, steamy romance book. And nine years ago, our main character, Vivi, if I'm saying her name correctly, Vivian, she cursed her then boyfriend, now ex-boyfriend, uh, when they broke up. And she thought it was just gonna be like a simple curse, just maybe giving him a bad hair day or something. But when her ex-boyfriend, Reese, returns to the town that he comes from, that Vivian lives in, that Reese's ancestors put up, I don't know, if I'm making any sense, but when he returns to his like ancestral home, if I can say it like that, lots of weird things are happening and Vivian's curse seems a whole lot worse than she thought it was gonna be. And they kind of like have to team up together. I read four chapters, I think. I'm on page 35. And by the way, sneak peek of a new Etsy product coming hopefully soon to my shop. I made like a moth bookmark with copper details it's focusing on my face not on the bookmark it's so shiny that it's making my camera all confused but i'm really proud of how this bookmark turned out and i made three other bookmarks i'm currently working on a tote bag design a dark academia style so i think it's going to be really cool and i'm also working together with a different company to make like t-shirts and mugs that sounds very exciting but that was besides the point i am like i said like 34 pages into the book it's fairly short like 300 pages but i'm not feeling as if i'm like fully getting into the story and i don't know if fiction is what i'm looking for right now i'm more into this book than I am in this one. Once I finish this, I will absolutely get further into the story and will probably be more sucked into it. As you can see, the hair is curled. Also, by the way, I absolutely still need to find out which angles are kind of good here in my new dorm. But that's besides the point. I also wanted to share with you two books that I bought last week when I went to Borussia, which is like this huge bookstore here in Utrecht. And it has become one of my new favorites. It was already in Utrecht, but the old building that they were in was... <laughs> 
maybe at most a five out of 10. And right now the way that like the store looks and just all the books that they have and the aesthetics, it's absolutely a nine out of 10 for me. And me and Brit from Basically Brit, who is a very good friend of mine, we went book shopping there and I bought two books to celebrate the two good grades that I got for my exams. One of these books you absolutely do know. And the other one, not so much, I think. So the first one is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And I saw Lexi from Alexandra Roslin talk about this book on her channel. And I've seen it floating around here in the book community a couple of times already. But when she mentioned that people told her this book is kind of like Knives Out, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. She loves it too, by the way. I just had to get it. And then I saw it in the bookstore. So we follow Avery, who all of a sudden, I think, inherits all of this money from like a billionaire and she has to go and live in his mansion but there are a ton of secrets a ton of games in the mansion as well and she has to deal with the dead billionaires family so it's full of secrets and deadly games and just a lot of drama i think and a lot of wealth so it does sound a lot like knives out and there is a sequel out that just released a couple of days ago i think maybe a couple of weeks the chapters are short and just the whole theme sounds perfect and amazing and something like i would absolutely adore and look at that spine it just oh, it will look so amazing once I have my bookshelves here as well. And then the other book, which I don't think a lot of people know this title. I haven't heard anyone talk about it as well and my camera's dying, so. Okay, and that is The Things We Don't See by Savannah Brown. This cover is so beautiful. And do you see that little like eye in there? The plot of this one just sounded exactly like something that's right up my alley. Lately, I've been loving these like mystery podcasts from like this Dutch television brand. Um, It's called The MPO3, MPO3, if you're Dutch. <laughs> and they have some great podcasts in which they like research these weird situations. There is one about like this big mansion that burned down and the owner was super wealthy and all of like his wealth and money, it was lost. And another one that I recently listened to was about a woman who has dementia and all of a sudden she starts talking about this Bob. Okay, my camera stopped filming, but I was talking about the other podcast that I've been listening that is about this woman who has dementia. And recently she has been talking to her daughters about this guy called Bob, who she had been dating before they met their father. And now she's saying that she got a child from him. These are like real life situations that happened. And like that podcast, like the people who produced it and everything were trying to figure out. And I have been loving that recently. And the plot of the things we don't see reminded me so much of that. The story takes place on this like secluded island and it is like a very isolated community. And about like 30 years ago, this promising singer called Roxy Rings, she disappeared, but like the town never really talked about it. And the town kind of acted like she ran away voluntarily. But now 30 years later, our 17 year old main character, she makes podcasts about these types of situations. And she's going to the setting that I just described armed with only her suitcase and a microphone. And she starts to like interview people from like the island. And she thinks that there is more behind this disappearance that the town is letting the outsiders believe. So that podcast and mystery element reminded me so much of what I have been listening to recently and what I have been loving. And I haven't heard anyone talk about this, but it seems so cool. It seems so cool. Like both of these books sound right up my alley. I've been buying so many books again lately. And like I said, I don't really have as much time to read as I had before, but I just wanted to share these titles with you because they both sound amazing. And if you have read any of these, let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and opinions. Okay. It's the next day <laughs> and they are working on like cleaning our apartment. So you can probably hear that. So I'm really, really sorry, but I actually finished everything I know about love this morning. And oh my gosh, yes, I really, really like this book. I loved how the focus of this book was not on like romantic love. I mean, it was a part of it, but it was more so on platonic love and self-love. And there were some amazing chapters about Dolly Alderton going to therapy for the first time and really trying to take care of herself and facing her fears and stuff like that. I feel like everyone who's like in their 20s, beginning of their 30s should pick up this book. I've really, really liked it. And I rarely, if ever, read non-fiction 
autobiographies. So highly recommend that book. And I didn't read anything in the X hacks, but yesterday I had a lovely evening with my boyfriend. We watched Squid Game and oh my God, we watched episode six and seven. And I think it was episode six that just literally shattered and broke my heart. And I just, I need to finish watching this series right now, but I can't. We will do that tomorrow when I see my boyfriend again. I hope that you guys enjoyed this relaxing reading vlog read with me video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere on the screen or in the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.